uh, British hostages um, are saying more with their body than they are with their mouths. I don't know how to read body language, but we have a body language expert from the UK. His name is Robert Phipps. He is joining us now. Robert, welcome to the program, sir. Good evening, Chief Glenn. Um, tell us what you have learned as a body language expert who has been looking at these clips. What, what are they telling us? Anything? Well, they're telling us that they're trying to mask and do the best of a, a bad job because um, if we look at the, the first footage of uh, the uh, Faye Turney, what she did, yes, like you said in your introduction, she was smoking a cigarette. However, it wasn't a confident smoking of a cigarette because she decided to blow the smoke down. Now, when you're feeling confident and outgoing and assuming you've got nobody in front of you, you blow the smoke straight out or you blow the smoke up in the air. She didn't. She chose to blow it down. Also, her eyes were looking down and to the right. This is what we do when we are engaging our emotional channel, so sort of gauging how we feel and how we feel about the pressure that we're under. Now, I saw some clips the, where she was, she was smiling, um, and, and you know, it's really hard because we know this has been edited and edited so tightly, but there's times when she's smiling. I mean, can you fake that? Would you fake that? What does that tell you? Well, the smile is not a genuine smile because when we genuinely smile, there's two muscles that come into play, the zygomatic muscle at the side of the mouth and the orbicularis oculi under the eye. And what that does is it turns the corner of the lip up and the corners of the eyes up and you get that sort of symmetrical meeting of the eyes and the mouth. Now, what she didn't do was she couldn't engage those muscles because it wasn't a genuinely felt emotion. So what she did was a, a masking smile. It literally sort of appeared on the face. Mm -hmm and it disappeared just as quickly. And she didn't show any teeth. Now, when you smile genuinely and happily, you show your teeth. Okay, now show me, tell me about the map. There's uh, something, I think this was from the hostage Summers. What did you learn from this? Uh, from Nathan Summers, when he was sitting there, what was interesting was he was obviously being coached to the right-hand side. And each time he mentioned about going into Iranian waters, he has this very uncomfortable shuffle in the chair. Three times he mentions it, three times he shuffles in his chair. Also at that point, his blinking rate increases from two to three blinks to eight or nine within the same time period. And the blinking is a sign it's of? It's a sign of stress, a sign of stress that you want to close your eyes really because you want to block these things out. It's a little bit like when you see your favorite team lose a, a football match or something like that. You tend to cover the face and it's exactly what he's trying to do. But Rob the blinking rate and click increases Robert, when we lie. Robert, could you do me a favor? Could you uh, uh, watch some uh, videotape of uh, Ahmadinejad for us and tell us if you can read anything to his body language? Um, is there anything that you have seen in these? And maybe we could have you back and, and tell us about some of the leaders over in Iran. By all means, I'll happily do that for you, Glenn. Great. Thanks a lot, Robert. Appreciate it. Coming up as yesterday, joined by a body language expert, uh, his name is Robert Phipps. He's over in London. He helped uh, put aside the official statements of what the British hostages were saying and actually started to read their bodies and find out what they were actually saying. We asked him to look at some of the footage of Iranian President Ahmadinejad gives us the same kind of insight. He's back with us now. Robert, what did you watch and what did you learn? Hi, good evening, Glenn. Hi. Well, in the first clip, um, we saw Ahmadinejad just entering a, a, a theater auditorium. And what you see there is that he's quite humble in his body language when he's on his, his home territory. He's nodding to the crowd. He even sort of tilts his head to acknowledge that. Now, it's not the sort of gesture you would normally see from a leader. Most gestures like that are meant for leadership gestures. They don't nod their head in subordination to, to people around them. Okay, so he's humble at the United Nations when he's walking in. Uh, it, are you saying that you believe he's a humble man? No, what I'm saying is that this is a man who knows exactly the right body language signals to send at exactly the right time to hit home okay. his message with his home audience. All right, have you seen any other body language? Did you watch a speech that he gave? Yes, I watched the speech. And again, he comes across, although he uses a lot, of, a lot more hand gestures, what he does do is he still comes across very humble in that circumstance. However, when you look at him when he's in the presence of the Ayatollah, He's a completely different character. He melts like a schoolboy, and it shows where the power struggle really is there. It's almost as though he's seeking the approval of the Ayatollah. Well, he kind of needs it to stay alive. What does the Ayatollah's body language tell you? 
The Ayatollah's body language is much more aggressive, much more authoritative. He uses a lot of pointing fingers and he jabs it forward to emphasize his point. He also uses a lot of eyebrow flashes like this as he's talking, he's emphasizing his point and jabbing that finger home. So what I would say, looking at the clips that I've looked at, Ahmadinejad is seeking the approval of the Ayatollah. Once he has the, uh, the Ayatollah's approval, he will get the approval of the rest of Iran. And Tony Blair, we saw some, uh, some videotape just, just a couple of minutes ago. What's Tony Blair's body telling you right now? I think Tony Blair's body language is staying, saying that he's in a state of flux because they're, they're caught in the catch-22. Do they go in all guns blazing, or do they take their time and go through the diplomatic channels? Has Tony and Blair changed? He, 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 he seems to have been the guy who was guns blazing for a while, and now he kind of seems defeated. Has he changed? Well, his body language has certainly changed. If we looked at the, uh, the two clips when he first spoke about the, uh, the, the, the Marines being captive, he looked down to his right, which shows he's using his emotional right. channel. However, when we look at him uh, talking about, you know, being more cautious and maybe using uh, other uh, means to get our uh, Marines back, he looks down and to the left, which tells me that he's choosing his words very carefully okay. and very cautiously. Robert, thank you very much. Now, protests on the streets of Iran show out.